Thank you so much, guys. Great cast on the day. And welcome, everybody, to the post-game lobby, joined by Crepo as well as the victorious Fanatic members, Jesses and Caps. Welcome, gentlemen. Uh, congratulations. But the first thing I want to ask you is after that loss versus G2 and you guys being very vocal on social media about how you're going to absolutely take this series home, are you happy with the way the whole series went in the end, Caps? Uh, I mean, I can honestly say that after the first game, I was kind of sad because it was a really tough game for us to play, at least, and we had some communication issues, uh, which I was I didn't feel that much in, uh, against G2, but they actually started showing uh, against Giants. But after the first game, we started, uh, we talked about it and we managed to fix it. Dresses. Yeah, I think the first game was just sort of, we all had to get used to playing or like, because we, we've been working a lot on our, on our communication and stuff like this. So I think everyone were stressing a little bit and maybe playing a bit too fast early game. And we just didn't really stick to our game plan coming into the game. And then, yeah, of course, we didn't really meet up to our expectations because we expected just to really fast 2-0. In my opinion, game one was kind of a tricky comp to play. Game two and three were seemed like easier, very meta composition. I mean, it helps when you have Maokai in top lane too. <laughs> it, just in terms of like game flow as well, did that help you guys communication? Uh, it's yeah, it's really nice to have um, Soas on something that can uh, roam a lot or like communicate more in terms of TP and stuff like this. Because on Alawi, he just wants to pressure his side lane and and like do well and want us to play around him, sort of. Mm -hmm. And it's not something we've been practicing that much. We've been practicing a lot of the meta stuff. And yeah, I think that also made us change up the draft a little bit after first game. Right, and then the next two games, you guys won quite handily. You wanted to take a look at the last game specifically, a move in the bottom lane with Jesses? Yeah, I basically just saw the trade because like you guys were playing really well CS-wise, already up, like I think, five or six very early. But then yeah. we saw a good trade coming out early where we're hustling over steps. But then it seems like there's still a bit of communication issue in, in kind of the chase. I don't really care the fact that two flashes were used. I was just wondering, is this still something you guys are working on? Or was this heat of the moment? Or, or what went through your head right there? Uh, I think because all three games, this was, the, this was the third game. So all, all three games, they were playing super passive. And they were really scared of even trading with us at any times. So they were just playing Varus and just max range farming with Q mm -hmm. and just avoiding us at all times. And we were like getting pretty impatient because even at that time we had to sort of drag back the wave yeah. because our jungle went topside so we just played safe and then we saw an opportunity I, I don't know if we saw Rex or something but they were really overstepping and we we're just like okay uh yeah let's just go and then we, we just called it was a go and I think it was fine until the moment where uh, I don't remember the, the exact play but until Ash flashed I think yeah it, it was a bit too much and because yeah, you guys ended up being down with flashes after all yeah I, in. honestly I think we were just a bit bored yeah it was just the, every lane was just really boring like they were just farming and do you think that's something that actually a lot of pro players need to get over like kind of the boredom of, of just passive lanes and then uh, just i mean i don't mind playing passive or like uh just farming or being like the the one the lane that has to like play back because mm -hmm. you're winning on the other side but it's like if if it's three games in a row you know <laughs> enemies only farming with q max range it's yeah that's how, we, that's how we used to tilt people back in the day. Oh, yeah? yeah. Back in the day. Here we go. Uh, about the new blood, though. Caps, yeah. were you bored in the middle lane? Uh, I mean, game one and two was kind of uh, kind of annoying to play, I think. Yeah, because I felt like every time I, I made him like go somewhat low and I was ready for the, for the solo kills, he would just recall. He would just drop a wave or something and just recall. Uh, was it the right thing to do for him, you think? Uh, I mean, I would never recall like, well, like he did, but uh, I think... That's was, what I'm asking. <laughs> Like, I mean, he, I guess he felt threatened. Yeah. He was afraid that he would uh, end up giving a kill. Yeah. So he just backed out. Uh, I, I don't think you got this or you've seen this, but Kreppel before the series did a special segment on you, taking a special look at your first series versus G2 and saying how you tend to play very risky at times and you sometimes are threading a thin line between I mean, dangerous play and... Yeah, we call play. it like there's a fine line between courage and stupidity and basically saying like <laughs> that you seem to like playing at the edge of like what is the risk zone. Uh, which I personally like in a rookie. Is that something you experienced as well? Do you agree? Or yeah. is that something you guys are working on? Because I can see in scrims that you can definitely start jumping over that line uh, very often. Uh, I mean, I wish I would call it the edge of perfection. Yeah. Okay. No, so, that, that, uh, I, can, sure. I can definitely see that. Yes, yes. And I, I mean, I, I would never, 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 I mean, I've tried some games where it was like we would just uh, practice macro or so whatever. Mm -hmm. And then I would just not go for anything mid lane. I would just farm, I would just farm. But it was, it would get really, really boring. Yeah. There we so, go again with the boring. So I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a much bigger fan of just trading, going in for the for the for your skill shots and trying to dodge your opponent's skill shots, 
And I mean, for, as of now, I feel like it works. So. Yeah, it's a, a very important to hear um, that you think it works. You're also the player of the series for this series. Uh, we had Perks on the desk last week after you guys played, and he was saying how uh, he thinks you're a very strong player, and he is now working personally for him on more of the macro side of things and the bigger picture, and that's kind of the natural arc of a mid laner or of a player. And I see that in you now, because now you say, I just think it's more important to get that individual outplay. Do you ever think about, okay, what is, what is the next step? Is the next step, I will need to focus on macro for a whole split, or I will need to focus on decision-making for a whole split, or, and does your team aid you in that? I mean, we have four uh, veterans, I guess you can call it. Mm -hmm. They have been there for a long time. So they have a lot of knowledge, especially in macro. And uh, I'm just getting like completely stuffed with the macro, I guess <laughs> yeah. you can say. Rotations left yeah, and right. Yeah. Yeah. And how to move and, and different compositions, and so, et cetera. So no. I feel like I'm improving more on macro than individual play. Jez, as you've played in multiple organizations, in multiple roles, and you, like, you've seen like young teams kind of grow and stuff, yeah. how is the Fnatic organization kind of working with you guys? Is it some, are they doing anything different for helping you guys kind of level up to the macro level? Because you're now in a new role again as well, mm -hmm. kind of starting all over. Um, I think I was in one of the more uh, cheap organizations in my past, like as a player, but I think when I was coaching in the models, I definitely felt like the, the higher tier life of uh, staff taking care of everything for you. And uh, now being a player at Fnatic, it's the exact same thing, if not better. And I'm getting everything that I want. Basically, we're all getting everything that we want uh, from, from Fnatic's uh, side of things. And everything's going really great so far with Fnatic. Sounds great. I just want to know some examples. Is the furniture amazing? Is the uh, house really cool? Yeah, they're taking care of furniture, <laughs> food, clementines. Oh, they got the clementines? Oranges? Okay, yeah. that means okay. that means Fnatic's going to That means, uh, yeah, and they're orange too, so it fits in the... Anyway, we're going to move on. Great job for you guys in that 2-1 two, uh, two, today. And earlier today, Splice, they took out Vitality 2-0 oh today. And, you know, it's always tempting to start with the negative, but they'll start with the positive. Splice absolutely stumped Vitality, look much cleaner than they did Crepo uh, last week. Yeah, I mean, we were casting that series. It was really well played. Did you guys catch any of the series? Yeah. Yeah, some of them. Any take on it? Vitality were really trolling in draft. Like, more, they were trolling harder than we were against G2, so that's, you know, next I was level. about to say, like, it's not like your draft week one was, was yeah, that yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, I mean, our draft week one wasn't optimal, but this is this was next level, you know? They, yeah. They're just really hard trolled. And they, yeah. they played pretty far back, so it seems that they were luck, lacking a lot of, like, synergy issues. It, it felt like three three different games of solo queue going on mm -hmm. at the same time. Everybody was kind of playing their own lane, but they were never trying to play together. Especially in target selection, it felt like Steelback and, and Nuketuck were just not on the same page. Uh, for you, Caps, you, you're now uh, a solo queue player kind of coming into the professional field. Is target calling in team fights, for example, is that something you're having issues with, or is it all natural? Or you guys, how do you guys select your targets in team fights? Uh, <clears throat> I don't. I don't. It's not something I've, I've thought about actually. So I think it's just something that we do naturally. Yeah. Okay. That we just hit whoever is. It's optimal to hit. Another yeah. thing on this plate. I mean, if you're on the same page, like yeah, it works. Yeah, then you don't need to. There's different calm systems that we, because we've had the benefit of watching different teams scrim, and some of them do it very naturally, where it's it's either like, it's kind of discussed in replays, mm -hmm. where they say it's either front line or, or X target steps in, and then it can be very naturally. Other teams just start frantically yelling which target to focus. So um, both systems are definitely valid. Splice here, Wanderers player of the series in their uh, in their performance. In general, what are your opinions on Splice when we came into the split? A lot of teams were saying after scrims they look incredibly strong. How do you think they're doing, Caps? If you have any insight, of course. Yeah, I mean, we have, we have scrimmed them a few times, and I, I personally thought that they would beat H2K last week as well. Um, they are they're strong. I'm not sure how I would rate them right now, but... Mm -hmm. Uh, I thought they would at least be stronger than H2K last week. So. All right, let's take a look at a... Or unless you have something to add on Splice. No, it's fine. Okay, That's cool. <laughs> so let's move on. take a look at the standings, because I wanted to bring that up so we would have more oversight, guys. Mm -hmm. uh, and I want to take a look at Group A. So G2 Misfits, now you guys are on the board. If you look at that, uh, consensus is G2 is reigning supreme. Fnatic should have their eye on second. And then Misfits is kind of the wild card for third or second. After playing Giants and playing uh, probably in scrims the other teams, would you dare say that Giants might be a better contender for the top three of the, the table, Jesses? Uh, I mean, Giants late game seems better than Misfits, mm -hmm. but early game they're oh, 10 times worse. Okay. So I don't know, it, it depends on how both teams evolve, but 
<coughs> currently, I think it's just G2 misfitting us. And do you think this is a comfort level, or what's the blocker here for Giants? What what would make them better? Is it inv individual skill, comfort, or just no aggression? Because you were saying they were playing rather passive. Uh, I think the reason why they were playing passive bot is not necessarily that they're passive, but I think they just sort of did the smart thing. Like they accepted that maybe they weren't uh, the better bot lane, so they just sort of practiced, I guess, to like play the comp, like the poke comp, or like the scale and play defensively and just not die bot lane, and that was what they did, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if we look at that other group, Vitaly, we talked about it. Do you see them digging themselves out of that, that hole that, that it's starting to get deeper and... Yeah, I mean, it's all, it's all technically possible, right? But yeah. the problem is, Vitality, they're coming in at a level where I think you could come in maybe early 2016 and have that like kind of lacking of, of teamwork because teams now they come in the split and they're like, yeah, we're working on things. But while you're working on these things, other people have already done them and they're working on the next step. So they're in phase one Will every other team starts in phase four or five and G2 is already in phase like 12 at this yeah. point, you know? So yeah, I think it's, they're too far gone. Well, especially in the fact that there's two groups now and there's five teams and you need to get uh, as high as possible in that table. In I mean, there's time. still cross-map group. We, yeah. we always forget it, but there's like four weeks of cross-group play where you play one match where you have to matter. So as long as you peak in the mid of the split, that's where you can really win important matches. How is it for you guys, Caps, as a team? Do you guys very much have your eye on, okay, already if I would have lost that series versus Giants, we would have been down? Or are you guys not thinking too much about how the standings look right now? Uh, I mean, personally, I don't feel, think that much about the standings. I, I really, I, I hope that we would have won against G2, and I got kind of sad, I guess, after the first loss against Giant, especially because I was like, if we then drop the next game, then then what will happen? Because I had, I have really high expectation for our team, and like I, I thought we would already be standing, like being in the top, mm -hmm. um, but but if we had lost today, then then it would have looked completely different, yeah. Who's the, the voice of reason there after that first game, Justice? Who, who steps in there and puts you guys back on the right track? Mm. Is it the veterans? Uh, yeah, I guess. I think it's all of us. Because, uh, I mean, yeah, like the veterans and I, I think the staff is pretty good at it. And we have uh, like a mental coach as well. And we're just sort of, I guess, all mature. And we all, we've all been there. We've all faced defeat. So it's just natural, I guess, to step back up and play normally. And you guys came back and you did it. Uh, well, tomorrow we'll be continuing our coverage of the 2017 EULCS Spring Split. Let's take a look on our matches. We have our match of the week, the Unicorns of Love versus H2K and Misfits versus G2. Uh, first up, the match of the week, guys. Unicorns of Love, they are now two series wins up. They look quite strong, as does H2K. How do you think that's going to go, Caps? Uh, I, 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 I have no idea, actually. But I think I, if I would have to put my money on someone, it would probably be... Unicorns, I think. Yeah. Okay. Two one unicorns. Carefully, because you know it's risky, Justin. No, I think it's unicorns for sure as well. Uh, I think uh, HUK, they're a bit random, and I think I, I think their bot lane is, I mean, at, at least from my point of view, just based off of bot lane, but I think uh, unicorns bot lane is better, and they play around their bot lane better as well. And I think the, the game is very, uh, like emphasized around like mid and bot and I guess jungle synergy, but yeah, I think unicorns have the edge there. I think those are those are all good points, but the the one caveat lies in the fact that I think HK's bot lane is aware that when they are weaker, they can also step away. That's mm -hmm. what they did very well in, in in the previous weeks. Is where uh, yield the turret, just step away, and then HK as a team was already out rotating first. So I think they can do that again. It all depends. Like it's fine if you lose gracefully and step away, but if, if that somehow, if you make one mistake while trying to lose gracefully, you get smashed. That is the problem, so we need to see what happens. We will. Jankos versus Zerx here also, just a very yeah, exciting match cool. there. Uh, and our friends over at the NALCS, they will be logging on at midnight with FlyQuest taking on CLG. Does anyone want to uh, do a prediction on that match? I mean, it's so surprising that FlyQuest yeah. is doing that well when they couldn't even have like proper PC setup and then CLG was starting off really slow. I mean, in the this or that from uh, Kobe and Jad, they, they were like arguing who was the bigger disappointment. So on paper, right now, Flycast should actually take it. Yeah. Anyone else have an opinion on that? I don't watch any. All right. Well, it's at you midnight. You'll be home just only. in time to watch it. We'll see what happens. Time for us to log off for the night. Thank you guys very much. Thank you guys, guests, for joining us Thank here. You. And Thank congratulations. You. And join us tomorrow at 4 p.m. Central European time. That is 7 a.m. Pacific for more European League of Legends. All right. Good night, nerds.